What is the role of doing and what is the role of knowing? Swami Atma Priyananda Ji, some of you have met him, he used to tell us this story about his early days as a brahmachari uh, in the training center at our main monastery at Belurmat. Uh, so we had one uh, great acharya, a, a teacher, Swami Mukhyananda Ji, who has passed since. He was a great scholar of uh, Vedanta and he had this interesting way of teaching. What he would do is, so this is an example, he's sitting in the class and trying to make this distinction. So he looks at the brahmacharis, the, the young novices, the novice monks who are sitting there. Uh, and he says, pointing to the garden outside, he had a high-pitched voice. And Swami Atmapriyanji is a good mimic, you know. He, he says, he said to us, look, the grass is green. And the other monks looked puzzled at each other and they looked outside. Indeed, the grass was green, but well, so, they looked quizzically at the teacher and the teacher said, the master said, the grass is green. Then he, then he said, fools, get me a glass of water. Immediately a few of them jumped up. This was something they could do. And they jumped up to get a glass of water. Again he said, fools, sit down. <laughs> now what did he mean by this? The grass is green is a fact. It doesn't do us much good to know that. But it's a fact. And what you have to do with a fact is to know it. And get me a glass of water is an action. It can be something that can be done. This is an important distinction to understand when you go into the path of knowledge, the path of enlightenment. In this path, it's like the grass is green. Much better than that, but still it's like that in nature. It's not like, get me a glass of water. In this path, the spiritual journey is not from one place to another. It's not from New York, from Manhattan to New Jersey. It will go from one place to another. From this world to heaven. From here to Vaikuntha or, or uh, you know, uh, Goloka or something. The, the heavens which are promised in dualistic religions. That's a journey. Physical journey or a post-mortem journey? No. In this, in this path, it's, it's not a path where you have to cover it like a journey. You have to go from one place to another. It's also not a uh, journey in uh, time. It's not that you have to wait. So we have to wait for the retreat to start. We have to wait for this day to come for the retreat to start. You can't go around anywhere and get the retreat. It's a journey in time. You have to wait. So do you have to wait? until I die and after death I will find God. It's not like that also. It's not a journey in time. It's not even a journey to some other thing. You know, anything else like a glass of water, you have to obtain it, you have to attain it. Whether it's, it's a glass of water or it's heaven. If this is not heaven and heaven is something else, it has to be obtained, it has to be attained. Here, there is no movement from yourself to another object. Rather, what is being spoken about is you, yourself. Aha, we will say, yes, but not exactly like this. Something then, you know, I will be, I am this poor little guy now, but I will be this amazing Brahman. No, exactly as you are right now. Not what you think of yourself. Not what you think you know about yourself. But what you are. So, how does that help? Vedanta says, what we are, right now, here itself, and everywhere, and at all times, what we are, we do not know this. We are deeply mistaken about what we are. So Vedanta is, Advaita Vedanta is the path of enlightenment about what? About ourselves. What good does it do? The truth about ourselves is not known to us, and when it becomes known to us, it's so amazing that it actually solves all our problems. To get that result, the solution to all our problems, atyantika dukkha nivritti paramananda praptischa, the complete cessation, transcendence of all suffering. I'm using the words carefully, transcendence of suffering. I'm not saying exactly that aches and pains will stop and disease will not come and death of the body will not come. I'm not saying that. I'm saying transcendence of suffering and attainment of effortless, complete, 
unchangeable fulfillment. That will come when we realize ourselves as what we truly are. So knowledge is the spiritual journey here. Um, from ignorance to knowledge, from not knowing the truth our, about ourselves to being enlightened about the truth about ourselves. That is the journey. And immediately comes the problem here. The problem is this. The knowledge that we understand is always knowledge of objects. It could be knowledge of a place, it could be knowledge of a person, it could be knowledge of, about a subject, it could be knowledge about you know, the subtlest of things like the COVID virus or about super strings or whatnot. It could be general knowledge, you know, which you go in a quiz and all kinds of knowledge. They're always knowledge about objects. We also have knowledge about ourselves, the subject. But what we consider normally is knowledge about the subject is also object. Body, an object. The internal workings of the body, object. Even psychology, the, what is going on in the mind, our thoughts, feelings, ideas, complexes, subconscious motives and drives, object. Why do you call them an object? Aren't they generally thought to be the subject? It's an object because you are aware of it. It's an object because you know it. Now, what Vedanta is talking about, the knowledge of the self, what Advaita Vedanta is talking about, the knowledge of the self, we have all heard again and again, it's not an object. It's the pure subject. It is that to which all the objects appear. Because it is not an, not an object, our common sense idea about knowledge also does not apply here. See, already we have got two, two big hurdles to cross. Our common sense idea about achieving something, doing something doesn't apply here. And it's knowledge that we want. But our common sense idea about knowledge also doesn't apply here. Unfortunately, that's the problem. It's actually very simple. It's actually very direct. But it's, you know, that's the whole problem. It's so simple, except that it's hidden in the most obvious of places. <laughs> that story about... Uh, uh, you know, in, in India, long distance trains. So you go on a journey, it might take one or two days. And uh, one man was traveling with a lot of money. And there was this other person, uh, there's a thief always on the lookout for an opportunity to steal things, you know. So he's sitting and he uh, notices this man takes out the money and counts it and puts it, stuffs it back and puts it away. And he was waiting. To, for the man to fall asleep at night so that he could steal the money. And at night the man fell asleep. Finally this, the thief snuck out of his own bunk. The train is going, racing into the Indian night. And he sneaks into the place where the man is sleeping, that man's bunk. And he begins to carefully search. No money. And he's scared. The man shifts this way, that way. So he gets scared. He searches. He couldn't find it. And uh, time to wake up. So he goes back to his bunk. Again, he tries the ne next night, the last night of the journey. Can't fight it. And then next morning, he can't bear it anymore. He's done such a thorough search of, of that man's positions. Nowhere. So he asks, finally breaks down and confesses to that traveler. Sir, I must confess, I am a thief. And I noticed you have a lot of money. But for, I mean, I just couldn't find it. Won't you tell me, I mean, this curiosity is eating me away. <laughs> Where did you hide it? And the man said, oh, I know what you are up to, no good. So I hid it under your pillow. <laughs> In our case, it's worse. If it's under a pillow, we might even stumble <laughs> upon it. It's hidden in us. We ourselves, not even in us. We ourselves are it. Now, how do you get hold of that? How do you get, how do you know the knower? Very old question. In the Brihadaranya Upanishad, Vigyataram Mare Kena Vijaniyat. Husband and wife are talking. The husband is asking the wife a um, rhetorical question. How can one know the knower? How does the subject objectify itself? Impossible. And yet it has to be done. So how is it done? Is it possible or not? 
people think it's not possible. The great uh, philosopher David Hume, he says, I've searched for the self carefully and I look introspect within myself. I just find a series of thoughts and feelings and memories and emotions and ideas. Where is this self? David Hume, so perceptive. And the same tradition, I was just listening to a video clip of Susan Blackmore, who is a leading consciousness uh, researcher in England. Um, she was saying in an interview, it's an illusion. There's no such thing as a self. Why? She says, I have meditated for 20 years. She's a scientist. For 20 years I've meditated and I do not find anything which corresponds to the self. Now the answers to, to Hume and to Susan Blackmore about 500 years ago in uh, Panchadashi, the Vidyaranya Swami, a great post-Shankara master of Advaita Vedanta, he says, the self is not to be found, it is not found, not because it does not exist, but because it's not an object. Whatever you are looking for, Whatever you can find is not the self. Because whatever you find is an object. Then there is no self, that would be the next mistake. Exactly what Hume said or today Susan Blackmore is saying. That there is no self. He says, no. To whom is the absence of the self? To whom is this inquiry that I am looking for the self? And I do not find the self. To whom is it appearing? It is to the self. To even to conclude that there is no self to be found, you require the self. Self means in the sense of awareness. It is to awareness. The conclusion is reached. There is no self to be found. Only in the presence of awareness. Not new. This answer is not new. It goes back more than 5,000 years in the Taittiriya Upanishad. After a thorough examination of whatever we think we are, Starting with the body, the, the physical self, the, uh, the physiological self, the, um, the mental self, the intellectual self, and beyond that the causal body, the panchakosha, examining whatever, why do they examine the annamaya, pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya, anandamaya, you know, the five sheets, why do they examine it at all? Because they are searching for the so-called self, the atman. And they find matter, they find vitality, they find thoughts and feelings, they find um, um, knowledge, they find blankness in deep sleep. None of it is the self. Why not? Because it's an object. The self, by definition, must be the subject. It's not the subject, it's an object. And then the question, the same question is what, what David Hume says, what Susan Blackmore today says, uh, 5,000 years ago, the same question. Then asadhiti vayadache, then it does not exist. The so-called promised Atman, Satchidananda, whatever you call it, doesn't exist then. Can't find it. Asad Brahmaiti Vedache, Asanneva Sabhavati, the Taittiri Upanishad says in Brahmananda Valli, the one who comes to the conclusion that Brahman, Atman, Self does not exist, he will himself become non-existent. Obviously you are not non-existent, you do exist, then what is the Self? Interesting, you follow this carefully, that once you exhaust every possible answer, you clearly see whatever you think could be I, is not I. Even this I, the feeling of I, this mental function, the ego, even that is not I, because I am aware of it, it's, a, it's an object. Therefore, you exhaust every possible option, and then you still don't find it, yet it is there. How do you find it? How do you realize? How do you, how is the pure subject, the self, how is it to be known? This is the second big problem in self-knowledge because it's not like any other knowledge at all. Ken Upanishad says, Anya Devata Dvidita Datho Avidita Dathi It is beyond anything that you know. It's not, any, do you know it? Yes, you see tentatively, then it's not it. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know it. It's not that either. It's other than the known, other than the unknown. Uh, so in this way it has been pointed out, how do you know the, uh, what cannot be objectified? It's a bit like 
you know everything you see everything with your eyes right now you're seeing everything with your eyes but you can't see your eyes with your own eyes um, there is one way if you bring a mirror or if you take a selfie of your face you can see the eyes but what you are seeing is not the eyes themselves directly you're seeing a reflection of your own eyes you're seeing a picture a photograph of your own eyes similarly you need a mirror which will show you show us the self the real self the atman and that mirror is vedanta this is what vedanta is it's a mirror not a very good example but okay i mean you have to just take the point of that that it's something that shows us just as what you see in the mirror is not the real eyes but good enough using that you can understand what the eyes are there also a person might make a foolish person might make a mistake and say okay i got the eyes saw the eyes it's there in the mirror no but that's you have to you know how to use the mirror similarly the vedanta will show us how i am brahman if you know how to use vedanta that realization will come it is possible because this is of the nature of awareness self luminous it reveals itself and it reveals everything else it shines itself and everything is revealed in its light because it shines it does not need another light to reveal it just like these lights they shine and they reveal the entire hall and you don't need another light to reveal this light so the atman is like that and yet we are missing it all the time i remember this amazing senior monk who is no more now um i was a novice once it is was, was about maybe 25 years ago this little ashram in a village um this monk was sitting and i went to him and out of nowhere i was a novice i mean among other novices he just looks at me and he says you know vishwaroop we are missing it a thousand times every moment my name is vishwaroop so you would call me vishwaroop i just met him just once or twice and that one that time i still clearly remember he looks at me we are missing it a thousand times every moment which means it's continuously shining forth very obvious we are missing it we won't tomorrow onwards we will be acquainted with it we'll know, learn how to use the mirror the mirror what is this vedanta it is the upanishads it is the upanishads